We begin with some late news this morning. President Bush made a surprise trip to Iraq overnight. He arrived this morning in Baghdad. He was greeted by the Iraqi president. He reviewed troops at the airport and will spend the day visiting with the American troops. This is the president's fourth trip to Iraq. It comes 37 days before he hands over the presidency to Barack Obama. But first to some uh, news back home, that scandal out in Illinois, and we're going to begin this morning with Attorney General of Illinois, uh, Lisa Madigan. Thank you, ma'am, for coming this morning. Uh, you filed Bob, the lawsuit with the uh, uh, Illinois Supreme Court uh, last week, uh, asking them to remove the governor from office because you said he was uh, incapable now of carrying out his duties. Uh, do you have any indication that uh, he might leave? We have heard uh, rumors in the media that he's thinking of possibly doing something or at least announcing something tomorrow. Uh, but at this point, we're really in a situation here in the state of Illinois where we don't have a governor who can legitimately govern. And so it has been imperative that we find a way to move forward. That's the reason for filing this really extraordinary lawsuit in front of the Illinois Supreme Court. And we hope that uh, you know they appreciate that we need to have somebody who can legitimately exercise the power and duties of governor so that our state can move forward in the interim because obviously the Illinois legislature also comes back into session tomorrow and they are going to be considering, I hope, moving forward with impeachment proceedings. Are you investigating him as well as filing this lawsuit or are you just going on uh, what the uh, federal prosecutor has made public so far? Well, when Patrick Fitzgerald, the U.S. attorney here, filed those criminal charges earlier this week, he made it very clear that one of the reasons behind his decision to do so was that there was a continuing political corruption crime spree going on uh, out of the governor's office, obviously with the governor involved in trying to sell the U.S. Senate seat, in trying to get campaign contributions for signing legislation, for making sure you know he was we're not going to give money to a significant children's hospital unless he got campaign contributions, trying to fire a member of the Tribune editorial board on and on and on. So obviously that basis alone would be sufficient. What I can tell you in terms of our office's involvement is that we have been providing assistance and information to federal law enforcement authorities all along. So you have actually been, your office has actually been a part of this. Can you tell us to what I, extent? I I cannot uh, say anything other than the fact that our office has been providing assistance and information to federal law enforcement authorities. Uh, Madam Attorney General, do you have any indication that anyone on Barack Obama's staff has been uh, in contact uh, with the governor or has done anything improper on all of this? Bob, I know what you do, what's been reported in the media, and that, that's actually all I know uh, in terms of any contact at all between President Obama's staff and uh, our governor or his people. You call this a lawsuit that you filed, uh, you called it yourself, extraordinary. And as I understand it, that law uh, provides a way to remove someone from office if they become physically or mentally incapacitated. Uh, is the governor incapacitated? I mean, what is the basis of your uh, lawsuit? I mean, I understand what you're trying to do, put pressure on him, but I mean, from a legal standpoint, is he crazy? Is he... Uh, physically unable to carry out his duties. So what, what is your basis in the lawsuit for filing? Well, actually, the Illinois Constitution does give the Illinois Supreme Court a role in determining whether the governor is able to serve. And then the constitutional provision does use uh, the word other disability after they indicate that, you know, if the governor either resigns or, or dies, uh, what would happen is the lieutenant governor would become the governor. Uh, we are using the, the term disability, but it's other disability and it is not defined and it is not limited to, therefore, either a mental or a physical disability. And it's very clear based on the information contained in the federal complaint uh, that all of the governor's actions at this point are going to be open uh, to questions of legitimacy. And so I think it is imperative that before the legislature possibly moves forward with impeachment, we make sure that our lieutenant governor become at least the acting governor so that we have somebody who can officially and legitimately exercise the power and duties of that office. Do you, do you think at this point that the, the governor could, could actually appoint anyone to fill that Senate seat? Because I can't imagine anyone would accept the appointment at this point. 
Exactly. Uh, nobody in their right mind would accept an appointment to the U.S. Senate seat that this governor made. Uh, the legislature tomorrow is also scheduled to take up a uh, law that would basically allow a special election to fill that seat, and I think that's what the people of the state deserve and want at this point. And do you have any idea uh, how quickly the Supreme Court would act, or have you had any indication they'll even take this uh, suit that you filed? Good point. Uh, it's obviously up to them. They've got full discretion as to whether or not to even hear this case. We did file a TRO, which puts this on an expedited schedule. So we would hope to hear from them sooner rather than later, uh, probably uh, just in a few days, actually. You, you would expect to hear in the next couple of days if, in fact, they're going to take the case. Correct, Bob. All right. Well, Mrs. Attorney General, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning, and we'll be uh, checking back with you. That's for